Welcome to lesson 3. In this lesson we are going to talk about scales, forms and policies of spatial planning. The European tradition of spatial planning can be described through its approaches which correspond to specific scales and forms of planning but also to certain levels of government and which can be classified as follows regional economic planning approach comprehensive integrated approach land use management approach and urbanism approach regional economic planning approach it is the largest case both from the point of view of, of the territory of reference and from the point of view of the issues covered. In countries where this approach is used, for example uh, France or Portugal, central government inevitably plays an important role in managing development throughout the country and in making public sector investments, with particular reference to the spatial components that are very often not articulated at regional level in European Union countries. The focus is on economic planning and support programs. Comprehensive integrated approach, also described as framework management. In this case, spatial planning is conducted through a very systematic hierarchy of plans from the national to the local level, which coordinate public sector activity in different sectors but focus more specifically on spatial coordination than on economic development. The Netherlands is closely associated with this planning style. The integrated approach requires responsive and sophisticated planning institutions and mechanisms and considerable political commitment in the planning process. Land use management approach. In this case, planning is more closely linked to the narrower task of controlling land use change at the strategic and local levels. The UK is the main example of this tradition, but in uh, different forms, this approach to spatial planning can also refer to the wall tradition of so-called <coughs> conformative planning. The figure shows the planning models in Europe. As can be seen, there are several states such as Italy, Spain, France and Greece included in this model defined as prior binding zoning, the conformative model, where the zoning design and attribution of it of its function become a special aspect. In, in this group, unlike the other two, the performative and neo-performative uh, model, the spatial choices are very strong because they are linked to in interests associated with the property regimes. Shannon Revolen states that the conformative model which still affect most of the systems and cultures of government of the European territory, parsius correspondence in form, manner or charter, and uh, actions in accordance with a specific standard or authority. In technical, uh, technical terms, the model makes use uh, of the prior binding zoning uh, of the planned area the public strategy is transposed into a map of rules. This model is typical of land use planning. The performative model, typical of Anglo-Saxon area, aims to achieve, instead of formal compliance, the execution of an action and the accomplishment of the demanded, promised and requested. In technical terms, 
the models uses an indicative and non-binding zoning of the planet area. The public strategy is transposed into a map of non-binding guidelines. Binding is only in political terms, but without legal, legal implications in the allocation of rights of use and transformation of land and building. Finally, the neo-performative model still focuses on binding zoning but manages to neutralize the preventive effectiveness of the conformation model by ensuring that spatial transformation rights are allocated as with the performative model after the transformation project have been submitted to public control. In this case, the public strategy is used as a basis for the collection of, of projects, their monitoring and subsequent negotiation with stakeholders. In the land use management approach, it is the local authorities who carry out most of the planning work, but the central administration is also able to exercise some power both through system supervision and by defining central strategic objectives. Very interesting is the table by Nadine that presents the practice of land use planning and spatial planning as ideal types, proposing a comparison on some characteristics of the plans. For the purpose, the role of land use plan is regulating land use and development through designation of areas of development and protection and application of performance criteria. The role of spatial plan is shaping spatial development through the coordination of the spatial impacts of sector policy and decision. For the form, the role of uh, land use plan is a schedule of policies and decision rules to regulate land use for the administrative area and mapping of uh, designation of uh, areas and sites for development, <coughs> purpose and protection. The role of spatial plan is strategy identifying critical spatial development issues and defining clear desired outcomes across functional areas, visualization of spatial goals and key areas of change, principles and objectives that will guide coordinated action. For the process, the role of land use plan is uh, discrete process leading to adoption of a final blueprint plan, confrontational process instigated through consultation on draft plans and political negotiation, stakeholders using the process to protect and promote their interests. The role of spatial plan is a continuous process of plan review and adjustment. Mutual learning and information sharing driven by debate on alternatives in a collaborative political process. Stakeholders using the process to achieve their own and mutual goals. For the ownership and policy community, the role of land use plan is a document of a planning authority providing guidance to other professional planners promoting and regulating development. The role of a spatial plan is a corporate document of the local authority in a shared ownership with communities and other stakeholders, partnership and NGOs. For the procedural safeguards, the role of land use plan is a final plan determined through adversarial inquiry on parts of plan subject to objection. The role of spatial plan is a final plan determined by inquisitorial examination of the soundness 
and currents of the whole plane. For the methods, the role of land use plan is mapping of constraints and collection of sectoral policy demands. Bargaining and negotiation with objectors and other stakeholders informed by broad planning principles. Checking of proposal through sustainability appraisal strategic environmental assessment. The role of spatial plan is building, understanding or critical spatial development trends and drivers, market demands and needs, and the social, economic and environmental impacts of development. Analysis of options through visioning and strategic choice approaches. Generation of alternatives and options assisted by sustainability appraisal strategic environmental assessment. For delivery and implementation, the role of land use plan is seeks to direct change and control investment activity in land use through prescriptive regulation, whilst mitigating local externalities through condition and planning agreements. For the special plan is seeks to influence decisions in other sector by building joint ownership of the strategy and a range of incentives and other mechanisms including land use regulation and planning agreements. For monitoring and review, the role of land use plan is measures conformance of the plan's policies and proposal with the planning control outcomes. Data provides portrait of plan area as a general context for implementation of proposal. Periodic but infrequent review of wall plan. The role of a special plan is measures performance of the plan in influencing sector policy and decision making. Data informs understanding of spatial development and the application of the strategy. Regular adjustment of components of plan around consistent vision. The last is the urbanism approach. It is the approach that refers to the tradition of urbanism, which has a strong architectural component and concern with urban design, townscape and building control, very close so that of uh, land use planning. This has been a significant feature of the member states of the Mediterranean area. In these cases, regulation was adopted through strict zoning and coding. There is a multiplicity of laws and regulation, but the systems are not so well established and have not commanded a high political priority or general public support. As a result, they are less effective in controlling development. Thank you for the attention.